academic decathlon practice test for math, part two. Um, number 30 is an interesting question because it wants to solve the systems of equation. So a system is when you have two equations. In this case, um, we have a parabola. That's going to be a parabola. Uh, so it's going to look something like this. And then we have a linear equation and that's going to look like that. So it's going to intersect. Ooh, let's extend that. It's going to intersect in two places. So the way we find the intersection is we use a couple of methods. We can use the substitution method. We can use the addition and subtraction. We can use the multiplication and then uh, addition subtraction. And what we do is we cancel out to find the either the x or the y coordinate of those intersecting points. We know that those points are going to be true, true for both of those equations. So we want to find the point that they share. Um, and so it's going to be a coordinate. So we have to keep that in mind on what we're doing and why we're doing it. So I'm going to use the substitution method. And the reason why we use substitution is it's set up for it. So it says y equals 2x minus 4. So in the other equation, we're going to plug in what y equals. So instead of writing x squared equals 4 plus y, we're going to write x squared equals 4 plus whatever that y value, which is 2x minus 4. Now, why did we do that? Because in each of these equations, we have two variables. And we can't solve for equations when they have two different variables. If we use the substitution method, we have one variable. Now, there is a unique aspect of it is this is being squared and this is to the first. So we're not, <laughs> we're not completely done with our work here. That hasn't necessarily solved uh, our, our we, we have some other issues. So uh, I'm going to set it equal to zero because that's what we do when we factor. Um, and I'm going to actually simplify this left side because we can combine like terms on the same side. So that gives us x squared equals 2x. Now I'm going to set it equal to zero, looking to use the zero property. And so set equal to zero. Uh, now I'm going to make sure it's in standard form, which it is. And now I'm going to look for a common factor, which it has. We don't have to do a times c if we can find a common factor and it has a common factor of x. So I factor out and now we have the product of two things that equal zero. So I know that one of those boxes must be equal to zero. So I set it equal to zero. We get x equals zero and then we solve and we get x equals two. Now, unlike typically when we solved for this, we thought that those were our zeros, our, our x-intercepts, but they are not. And that was the important thing about this problem. A lot of students would think that the two solutions are 0, 0, and 2, 0, that these are the intercepts. They are not the intercepts. They are the solutions to the system, meaning my two coordinates are going to be 0, comma something and... 2 comma something. So how do I find that? Well, I have to plug them back into either of these equations. This is going to be the easiest because it tells me what my y, but the mistake that most students make at this point is they forget to substitute it back in. So my equation was what? y equals 2x minus 4. 2x minus 4, and now I want to find y when x equals 0. Negative 4. So my solution to the system would be 0 comma negative 4. And then I'm going to plug in my other x solution when x equals 2. So when I plugged in 2, I got 0. So these are the two solutions 
to the system, meaning if I plug both of those into either of these equations, they would come out true, meaning they share a common point. They share two common points. So I'm going to look for 0, negative 4 and 2, 0, which is A. Okay, so that's a good one. That one a lot of students probably would get wrong. Solve the system. Again, same exact thing that we're doing. We are going to, um, well, first of all, I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to distribute that, and I'm going to make that 2x plus 2y equals 6, and I'm going to move my y because I want them to be in the same format. So then we know what we want to do. So now I'm going to use multiplication. I'm going to multiply that top because I want to get rid of one of these variables. In fact, we're going to find something interesting about, uh, <clears throat> about that. But um, did I do that right? I did that add four. Yep, that's good. I'm going to multiply this by negative two because I'm going to try to get rid of the x values. If I multiply everything by negative 2, I get negative 4x minus 4y equals negative 12. And then I'll just bring that equation, 4x plus 4y equals 2. And um, that's interesting. Where did Mr. Mac... Oh, Mr. Mac made a mistake on the other one. <laughs> um, and if I use the addition, I'm going to add that column, and I'm going to add this column, and I'm going to add this column, and that gives me 0 plus 0 equals negative 10, and I get 0 equals negative 10. And what does that tell me? No solution. And what does no solution mean? Well, it means that these lines are parallel. No solution means that there are no intersecting points, meaning these two lines don't intersect. Well, what lines don't intersect? They are either parallel or they are the same line. Now, we know that they are not the same line because they are not the same equation. So, um, <clears throat> They're kind of close to each other, but they have different y-intercepts, hence why they are parallel. So the solution to 31 is going to be E. There are no solutions because there are no uh, intersecting points. There are no common points that they have as solutions. So fun part, fun problem. Uh, evaluate f of x equals 3x squared minus x for when x equals negative 3. So we're going to find f of negative 3 where 3 times negative 3 squared minus negative 3, lots of negatives here. We're going to square first. We always get rid of the exponents first. And we'll combine those two signs. We get 27 plus 3, which is 30. So f of negative 3 is going to equal 30. That would be c. Let's keep moving along here. And we have, uh, what is the inverse of the function? Ooh, this is good. A lot of students don't know what inverse. So to, we're going to rewrite this equation as y equals 2x minus 1. We know that when we see g of x, that is a function notation. If we want to write it in linear notation, we can write it as y. And the reason why I do that is inverse means that we're going to swap these two values. So we're going to rewrite this equation as x equals 2y minus 1. So we just flipped the variables, and now we're going to solve for y as if we had it. So we're going to add 1. We get x plus 1 equals 2y. And then we're going to divide by 2, divide everything by 2, and we get 1 half x plus 1 half equals y. And that is the inverse of that function. So if we want to rewrite it as a function, we, we could write and start it in standard form. And then instead of g of x, 
we say g of negative 1 equals 1 half x plus 1 half. So that would be the inverse function, and I think that that is a. Is that a? Yeah, g of, oh, sorry, g of negative 1, sorry. I put the negative in the wrong place. So the inverse of that function would be that. Now that is inverses. I guess you kind of see that in um, algebra 2 pre-calc, probably pre-calc, maybe more than, uh, than algebra 2. But it's a good question. Given that f of x equals 3 times the square root of x, find f of negative 1. Ooh, so what is the inverse of that? So we again talk about inverse. So the inverse of that is we're going to take the equation y equals 3 rad x and we're going to flip it around. We're going to reverse these two values again. <clears throat> so we get x equals the square root, x equals 3 times the square root of y. Let's divide by 3. Let's isolate that radical first. We get x over 3 equals the square root of y. What gets rid of a square root is a square, so we're going to have to square the entire thing. We need that parentheses. We need the Chewbacca. So if we square, we would square the x, which becomes x squared. We would square the 3, which becomes 9, equals y. So that would be our answer. So we have y equals x squared over 9, which can be written as y equals 1 ninth x squared, and then we would write it as the inverse. So what was our f of x? f of negative 1 x equals 1 ninth x squared. Um, I would write x squared over 9, but I think our choices uh, is d. I think that's what it is. Yeah, those are our choices. Um, if f of x equals the absolute value of x, what changes have been made to create the uh, g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2? So this is what we call the parent, the parent equation, and we are doing a translation. A translation. So what we look for is g of x is in this format, a x minus h plus k is our template. And so what we see is the opposite. So that vertex, this is in vertex form, is going to be 3 comma uh, 2, I think, would be our vertex. But no, 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 that's our, sh that's our shift, sorry, our shift. So we are, um, we are shifting um, right three. Yeah, actually that was right, right three and up two. So this is going to be, yeah, because it's the opposite. So what we see, left three, negative three, we know, yeah, so I said three, two. So that is correct. We're going to go right three and up two, right three, up two. That is A also. Um, and that is our uh, shifting, our translation. Um, when we see this translation, h of x equals x squared, that's the parent. Um, what changes have been made? Two, so we're inside here, and this is outside, plus we have a negative. So that negative is going to tell me that it's inverted. It's the, or, uh, it's the reflection, sorry, reflection. So we're going to reflect over the x-axis. Um, well, that's upside down. We'll say upside down is what, how they say uh, reflect over the x-axis. Um, and then we are going to, uh, it's inside, so that's going to go opposite of what we see. So that is left 6, uh, left 6, so that looks like it's going to be B. And then this is a shrink, that's a shrink factor of 1 half, so half as tall. So my answer is going to be B.
Yeah, um, <clears throat> you'll see in 3.7 and 3.8 in Big Ideas for Algebra 1, goes into detail. You might want to look at those uh, extra practice problems and uh, the videos for the extra practice on translations uh, and how they are affected outside of the parentheses and inside. We have horizontal and vertical shifts, and then we have um, shrink and uh, stretch factors, and then we have reflections over the X and Y axis. So those are kind of complicated. Uh, that's going to need to be done outside of this video if you want more practice. All right, we have a right triangle, so much like we talked in class today, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We call that the Pythagorean theorem, where a and b are the legs, and c is going to be the hypotenuse. So we have w squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. And then we can solve for that missing variable. w squared plus 225 um, <coughs> equals sorry, 17 squared, which is 289, minus 225, minus 225, gives me W squared equals um, 64, and now we take the square root, and why didn't I do plus or minus when I take the square root of a variable being squared? Because we're talking distance, and we would not have negative distance. Uh, square root of a square cancels, and we're just left with 8. Square root of 64 is a perfect square, so that distance is going to be 8. We don't know if it's a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45 triangle, so we wouldn't use that. Here, uh, we again don't know anything. <clears throat> we have values. So it says solve for x. So we're not going to come out with a concrete value, but we will come out where we can solve for a variable. So we have the two legs. We're going to square the two legs and add them, and that's going to equal the hypotenuse squared. So 2x squared is 4x squared. 3y squared is 9y squared equals 5 squared, which is 25. Now we're going to solve for x. So we'll first move my y squares to the other side. We get 4x squared equals, we'll write it as this for the time being, and then we will divide by 4. Divide by 4. And that leaves us with x squared equals 25 minus 9y squared over 4. And we want to isolate for x, so we'll take the square root of both sides. We still don't have to do the plus or minus because we're dealing with distance. So I'm going to separate these under their own houses, which I call radicals. And we can do that because it's division. So we can separate the division. I'm not separating the 25 and 9y squared because that's addition and subtraction. So we get x equals the square root of 25 minus 9y squared over 2. And then, um, is that one of the answers? No, and that's not, but we can change this. So that is the difference of two squares. So I can write that as 5 minus 3y, 5 plus 3y over 2. Now, why you would do that, I don't know, because it's not a binomial square. So that's only if it was a binomial square, it would cancel out the square root. But I don't know the, the benefit of writing this and this. I would probably keep it in that form, opposed to showing the difference of squares. It doesn't get me anything. It's just more writing. So I don't necessarily agree with um, this answer, uh, and it's divided by 2, which can be seen as 1 half uh, times the quantity of 5 minus 3y, 5 plus 3y. Remember, conjugates create difference of squares. And so we would get C here. Um, yeah, I disagree with the answer. I'd leave it as 
25 minus 9y squared. But I'm not making the test. Find the length of the line segment with endpoints. So we're going to use the distance formula. Distance equals the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus, excuse me, minus y sub 1 quantity squared. And that's using Pythagorean theorem. And that's just showing the distance. So we have uh, distance equals the square root. My x sub 2 is negative 3 minus negative 3 quantity squared plus my y sub 2, negative 10 minus my y sub 1 quantity squared. We get uh, that's going to be 0 squared plus negative 21 squared. And that's going to equal uh, 21, 441 squared of 441. So my distance is going to equal 21. 21 units, sorry. Yeah, so it's going to be E. That's how you would complete that problem. Number 40, find the length of the line segments with endpoints, blah, blah, same thing. We're going to do distance equals the square root x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. x sub 2 is 3 minus negative 2 quantity squared plus 8 minus 10 quantity squared are my y's. That's going to be 5 squared plus negative 2 squared, which equals 25 plus 4, which equals the square root of 29, which cannot be simplified because 29 is a prime number. So it's the square root of 29 units. If we could simplify, they would want us to simplify. Now, here is 30, 60, 90, and we have to remember then in all 30, 60, 90s, 30, 60, 90, that the short leg is going to be x, that the long leg is going to be x rad 3, and the hypotenuse is going to be twice the short leg. So if my short leg is 5, then my long leg is going to be 5 rad 3, and my hypotenuse is going to be 10. But it wants to know what t is. So t is 5 rad 3. Yep, it's a good one. Nice, you use that a lot in geometry, so you will see that prolifically. Uh, here we have the inscribed angle and the central angle, and we know that this angle is going to be twice this angle. So <clears throat> 2 times 13 is going to equal 4x plus 6, so twice this angle will always equal the central angle. So that's 26 equals 4x plus 6 minus 6. We get 20 equals 4x, divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 5. Make sure you're answering what they want. Do they want the central angle or they just want x? They just want x. So. That would be D. 43, find the volume of a cylinder with a radius of 3 feet and a height of 2 yards. Now, I'm, I got this problem wrong because I was not aware that one was in feet and one was in yards. So, and those sneaky, they give the answers in feet and yards. So I don't know, am I converting 3 feet to 1 yard or am I converting 2 yards to 6 feet? So I'm going to have to do twice the work. We know that volume of a cylinder is going to be big B times H, where our big shape, our base of our shape is pi r squared times the height. Uh, so the radius of three feet. So let's do, uh, let's do feet for this one. We'll do feet for this one, and we'll do yards for this one. We'll use the same formula. 
y equals pi r squared times height. So here, volume equals pi. The radius in feet is three. Quantity squared times the height is six feet, or six. And that's going to be uh, pi times nine times six. So that gives us 54 pi feet cubed. And then if we use yards here, we're going to do volume equals pi. My radius is one yard squared times the height, which is two yards. So volume equals pi times two or volume equals two pi yards cubed. So now I'm going to look to see which of the choices. So uh, two pi yards cubed. So that was a little bit tricky. I didn't like that one. I fell for that one. That gets me. <laughs> I kicked myself. Find the side length of a cube with a volume. So a cube looks like this. When we talk about the volume, that's still big B times H, where you have the side times the height. And what do we know is in cubes, all of them are the same. So it's going to be x squared times x, or volume equals x to the third. We're given the volume is 64, so x to the third. So we're going to take the cube root, the cube root of x to the third in order to cancel that cube. And that gives us x. We don't have to worry about, uh, well, actually, plus or minus doesn't matter here. It would only be plus because the negatives wouldn't cancel. So what value of 64, what number times itself three times would equal 64? Well, that would be 4 to the third. And they cancel, so 4 equals x. So the side length is going to be centimeters. To the first because we're talking about a side so it would be c it would not be centimeters cubed because it doesn't want to know it is a side length which is one dimensional so don't get tricked by that that's a good one 45 finding the mean so where mean is going to add up all these six plus four plus eight plus two plus twelve plus five plus four plus three all divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is 10, 20, 32, 37, 41, 44 divided by 8, which is 22 over 4, which is 11 over 2, which gives you 5.5. No calculator needed. 45 is 5.5. Find the median, that means the middle. So now we have to put these uh, numbers in order smallest to largest. So we have to know our units. Now we can either convert all those into sixths or we can look at it and understand that one sixth is gonna be my smallest unit. One third is gonna be my next smallest unit. One half is gonna be that one. Then we're going to have two-thirds, and then we're going to have five-sixths. Looking at, if we made them all sixths, it would be super easy to see whether we were right or not, and I'm not. So <clears throat> that's one-sixth, that's two-sixths, that's three-sixths, that is four-sixths, and five-sixths. So yes, it's in order. My mean is going to be my middle, so I cancel out the outer two, the next inside, and my answer is going to be one half. I didn't want it yellow. I thought I changed it. C, one half. Number 47. What is the probability? Probability is number of successful outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. 
So what is the probability of rolling a multiple of three when using a regular six-sided die? So a six-sided die can be one, two, three, four, five, or six are the number of possible outcomes. And successful outcomes, three is a multiple of three and six is a multiple of three. So there are two successful outcomes. So it is a one-third probability, B. Good, 47, 48, love 48. To find the equation of the tangent line in the diagram below, we know, uh, so this is the tangent line. You better know which one is the tangent. That's the tangent, this is the radius. So we wanna find the slope of the radius in order to uh, understand what the slope of the perpendicular. We know that perpendicular lines have a, uh, what did we call that, opposite reciprocal? I forget what, we, what the notation, but it is. I didn't know if they said the negative reciprocal, but the opposite reciprocal of the slope so if we look at this, we can do this as x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two. So we can have seven minus three over five minus two, which gives us four over three. So that's the slope of this line. That slope is four thirds. So the slope of its perpendicular is going to be the opposite reciprocal. So negative three fourth slope of that line containing this point. So we can either, oh, and they did it in points. No, they have point slope. They have slope intercept. This is point slope, kind of point slope, but not really. This is slope intercept, and this is kind of slope intercept, not completely. So uh, I'm gonna put in point slope first because they gave me the point and the slope. That'll be the easiest, y minus seven equals uh, negative three fourths times the quantity x minus five. And we're gonna look to see if that is one of the answers. So we see that this is a slope of four thirds. So that's not gonna be it. This has a slope of negative four thirds, close, but not it. This has a slope of three fourths not gonna be it. This has negative three-fourths, and D and E both have negative three-fourths. Oh, nope, sorry, E is not even. E has a slope of three-fourths, but not negative, because if I divide by four, we get a slope of three-fourths. So through deduction, I know my answer is D. Now if I simplified and solved, so if I distribute we get y minus seven equals negative three fourths x plus 15 fourths. Negative three fourths times negative five is positive 15 fourths. And then we're gonna add seven and I'm gonna add 28 fourths because that's what seven is equivalent to in fourths. And we get y minus seven equals negative three fourths x. Ooh, that feels wrong, but we're about to see it. Uh, 43 fourths. Okay, but that's uh, in decimal form. So, no, it's not one minus seven. That canceled. Uh, so we get y equals negative three fourths x plus 10.75. 10.75, yes. Okay, it checked out. We like it when it checks out. Uh, the volume of the box is 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 inches cubed. Find the expression for this missing side. So uh, we know that the volume is going to be base times width times height, and they want to know what the height is. So we have 2 times x plus 1 times the question mark is going to equal 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. So there's a couple ways we can go about this. So we can factor this, we can factor out a two and get x squared minus two x minus three. And we notice that if we divide by two, 
we're left with x plus one equals x squared minus two x minus three. And we're, not, we're gonna factor this. So we're gonna do a times c, or when we're really good, we know how to do mental math factoring. That's where you should get to, is can you look at a trinomial and factor it? Factors of negative three, when subtracted equal negative two, produce that, and now we can divide by x plus one, and we get one equals x minus three. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, the answer is x minus three. So it is D. I don't know how I solved that. Oh, the question mark. Forgot, forgot, I lost the question mark. Question mark. Sorry, times question mark. Times question mark. And then times question mark. So we get not one, we get question mark equals X minus three. So that to me was how I did it. My most logical was the probability of choosing a red queen from a standard deck. So successful. How many red queens are in a deck of cards? Two out of 52 possible cards in a deck of cards. So that is 1 26th, and that's going to be B. That's it. That's all we got. Good luck. Hopefully that helps you. I will present the practice test number two momentarily, and you'll be able to check and see if you got better. Good luck.